Hey there, it's Jana from Pearl Together. So I want, had a couple other thoughts about the toe up sock that I wanted to, to add. And I, you know, it's one of those things where you always think of stuff after the fact, think, think of things that you should have mentioned the first time. Um, but I don't want to take the first video down and redo it and put it back up because there are some people that have comments on there and I don't want to make that go away for them. And anyway, so this is the uh, epilogue, afterthought, stuff I should have mentioned beforehand. So if you are knitting toe up and you want to separate your yarn into two halves, two equal sections, um, if, you're, if you don't have 50 gram balls or the smaller size yarn skeins and you just have one large one, for example, like this is 100 grams, um, the first one I mentioned the other day was 100 grams. Sometimes you have skeins that are not even wound and they're just kind of twisted together and then looped back through. Those you'll need to wind off and separate into two, two equal balls of yarn. And so the easy way to do that is to just simply get your ball winder. If you don't have one, um, you, can wind, you can wind by hand a center pull yarn cake using like a wooden spoon or something like that. I can um, link to a video about that. Um, but by far the easiest thing to do is just use a ball winder or... You know, you can wind a ball of yarn the old-fashioned way. Just be really careful not to get it too tight. You don't want to stretch the fibers and wind it too tightly. Anyway, so you would start pulling off your yarn off the skein and wind it either on your ball winder or wind it by hand and then weigh that. Do what you think looks like about half and then weigh that and make sure that it's half the amount you started with. You know, weigh it before you cut it, obviously. So that's one way you can separate that off. You'll want to do that to make sure that you have two equal balls of yarn and that way when you're done knitting the leg of your first sock, you know you have enough left over in the second ball to complete your second sock. Okay, I'm going to show you in this video also how to do the cast on, Judy's Magic cast on with double pointed needles. It is terribly fiddly. Kudos to those people that use double points. I started with them. They are not my preferred method. It's super pokey, fiddly. Um, it's enough to make you want to... Yeah. But some people like it. So out of respect for those people or those people that you know are using double points because that's what they have and they're willing to persevere, good on ya. So I will muddle through that and show you how I did the Judy's Magic cast on on double pointed needles. Okay, here you go. I'm a few inches into knitting the foot portion of my sock, and I will, I have to tell you, I actually, um, late last night I actually frogged it back, or ripped it, ripped it back to um, where I have the tail sticking out here, and the reason I did that is because if you recall in the first video, I actually increased to where I had 80 stitches based on my foot measurement my calculations. And I had knitted it up to, oh, this kind of aqua, light blue color here. And then I tried it on, and I didn't like how it fit. It seemed kind of wide and a little baggy, and I really didn't care for it. And so I just went, I took out the needle, and I ripped it back. And then I picked up the stitches again um, down here. And I took it back down to where I had um, 72 stitches, after I'd increased 72 stitches. And then I re-knit it back up. Now, with 72 stitches, that changed the ribbing that I had. Remember before I had a 80 stitches, so I had an eight stitch repeat, where I had a purl one here, and then I knit six, and then purl two, knit six, purl two, knit six, all the way across, ending with a purl two, or sorry, ending with the purl one, because I wanted it to be symmetrical. That only works if you have a, a multiple of eight on your top needle here, or the foot needle. And, and that was fine when I had 40. Now I have 36 because I have 72 total. And so I decided to go with a six stitch repeat instead. So I still have that same purl one to begin with, but then I knitted knit four, purl two, knit four, purl two, knit four, purl two, and so on and ending with a purl too. So it's still the same pattern, it's just that these ribbing or the knit sections in here are a little bit more narrow, which I really like how it looks, and so I'm happy with that. And my only point here is that this is all very customizable. Um, you can, you know, you can knit three, purl one, knit three, purl one. If you'd like a four stitch repeat, you can knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. You make it however it makes you happy and what looks good with your yarn, you know, whatever you'd like to do. 
Um, okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and cast on my second sock using double pointed needles. Um, I have had two or three people ask about that. So I'm going to cast on my second one. Now if you'll notice here, you know, when we cast on this one, I started with kind of that darker purple. Now on my second skein, my second 50 gram ball, it's coming, it's coming off a little bit differently. When I pulled out the center and I had my yarn puke, that's what I call it, when you get that wad that comes out in the beginning. Yeah, I know that's a little crass, but that's what it seems like. Anyhow, um, I'm starting with the pink section. Now, so my socks are gonna not match up exactly. I don't. That doesn't bother me at all to have fraternal twin socks. If you need to have it exactly the same, if you want your stripes to match up exactly, then you'll just have to go find the pur purple section in here and you know work that out. Pull out some more, find the purple section to start with. Um, I thought about doing that, but by seeing which color was at the end of the skein here and just knitting the skein from the outside, but obviously the aqua is at the end, so that wasn't going to work either. So, but again, it doesn't bother me. You, you do what makes you happy. Um, huh, my mom and I were talking about that on the phone today, and she goes, well, that would make me nuts. She probably would go and find the purple section, um, but you know, there's other things that irritate me equally, so do what works for you. Let me just say that the awkwardness that follows is the horror show of me trying to cast on with double pointed needles. I do not normally do this, but I just wanted to give an, a brief introduction for those people that asked. So if you're not interested in that, uh, feel free to watch a different video now. All right, so I have um, a set of five Knit Picks laminated wooden double pointed needles. Okay. I have I prefer a set of five. I use four to hold my work and then one is my working needle. And I'll show you how that's going to end up. But first we're just going to start with two. Um, just like we did with the circular needles. And I'm going to, you know, make my slip knot um, 10 or 12 inches in. And again I'm going to have the working, or sorry, the tail of the yarn going off the top. So let me just set that down. We'll snug up the slip knot that we have. Okay. Snug that up. Lay the second needle down in front of it. All right. And I like to even things up. Go ahead and uh, pinch with your index finger and your middle finger. And then pinch again with your ring finger and your pinky. And I just use my thumb to kind of control everything. So it's already coming off the back. So I want to specify this. I didn't do a very good job of clarifying this with the last video. We're going to go wrap around behind. We don't start around the front. We wrap around behind using, whoops, I just pulled it off. Huh. Okay. You know what? Things happen. It's all right. We can overcome. And, you know, videos are not perfect. I tell you what. I appreciate when people make mistakes because it makes me feel like I'm not alone. I don't watch very many YouTubers that are, seem perfect all the time just because it's not. Okay, so we're coming out the back. Again, this is the yarn tail on the top and we're gonna go around behind and up, wrap around the front and into the middle. Okay, so kinda hang on to that with your left index finger here. And the bottom one's gonna go around behind, up over the top, and into the center. All right. Again, around behind, up and in the middle, around behind, over the top, and in the center. Okay, so we're just going to keep on doing that. Now, if you start talking or you get interrupted and you forget where you are, you can tell the over the top was the last one we did. So and that came from down here. So to begin again, I'm going to go with this one around the bottom and in the middle, over the top and in the middle. And I'm using my index finger on my right hand to just help control everything. And you'll get in your little figure eight groove here. Okay. And after you think you've done a few, we'll count and see where we're at. Okay. And you, you know, mine's pretty tight and, and that's okay. I want my cast on to be pretty, pretty snug actually. So two, four, six, eight, nine. All right, I have a few, few to go. Two, four, 
6, 8, 10, 12, 14. There you go. All right, now again, we're going to just simply hang on to this with your left index finger and turn it over. So just turn it 180 degrees so now everything's pointing to the right. We're going to keep our yarn tail and we want to have that in the back. Okay, so arrange that so it's in the back. What have I done here? Okay. Yarn tail in the back. There, I had it switched. Okay. And the reason for that is we're going to take the working yarn and we're going to wrap it as if to knit. So take this tail here and just kind of tuck it back with your left hand and hang on to it for a moment. Get another one of your double pointed needles and we're going to go in here as if to knit. All right. So this is going to be super pokey and fiddly for a little bit, but just bear with it here. Go in there as if to knit and then get that, take that off. I know that seems really awkward, especially with that other needle hanging out in the way. But you're just going to have to be really careful to go in between here, wrap the next one as if to knit. All right? And just keep focusing on the top needle because those are the ones we're knitting the stitches off of. Okay, go in there as if to knit. All right, take that one off. I know it's very fiddly and it feels really awkward. I believe, you know, the circular needles are easier just because the cable is more flexible and you're not trying to, to deal with this other rigid needle underneath. I've knitted seven of those first stitches off onto a double pointed needle. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab another one and I'm going to do the next seven knitting off. Because what I'm going to do, I have 14 on each side and I'm going to separate my stitches into four sections two on the two needles on the top of the foot two needles on the bottom of the foot I almost grabbed the tail to start knitting with that don't do that so this is very pokey and very fiddly but it's just gonna take some patience until you get established so those are the seven I just finished right here okay and now that I've inserted my next needle into the next stitch and I want to make sure that my working yarn is coming off this the correct way because you don't want to double wrap the stitch you just finished. So you can see I'm, I'm knitting that one off. Now this is pretty tight. I cast on pretty tightly but that's okay we're just gonna deal with it. Sometimes metal needles are a little better for this. I'm going in and around. This is super fiddly. Just go, go slow and bear with it. And I got that eased off of this left hand needle here. Okay, now I'm trying to just ignore this back one because it's it's awkward and it's in the way, but I'm trying to ignore it. Okay, so we're just going to go in, wrapping as if to knit. I'm so awkward. I'm sure there's people more adept at this than I. But all right, we've got three of them. It'll get easier as we move further away from this needle, the one we've already done. It will get easier. So we're going to tuck that down out of the way as best we can so we don't even have to look at it. Wrap that around. Still knitting. Okay, that's four on that one. Going. Ugh. Yes, I do struggle with this, as you will. But just know that this is the hardest part with all this fiddly business here. Okay, we've only got one left to do on this top section. And then we will be turning our work over just as we did before. Whoops. I'm also struggling to uh, do this around the camera. So if I had it actually in my lap, I might not... Maybe that's an excuse. <laughs> okay. All right. So we've got those on our top, our two needles now. So center, center that up so you don't lose anything. All right. And you can see we've knitted this top section, which is this is needle one, this is needle two. Okay. That's going to be the top of your foot. Now we're going to turn the whole thing over just like we did before. And this, these 14 stitches 
we're going to knit those off as well and we're going to knit those into the back loop just like we did before but we're using double points so we're just going to ignore these as best these this bottom section as best we can and we're going to go into the back of this needle the back loop of this first one I'm just trying to arrange this so it's a little less awkward so knit into the back loop of that okay this is a little like pickup sticks okay okay we're gonna go around as if to wrap it knitting and in, knit into the back loop and slip that off okay whoops almost lost you off the camera there okay knitting into the back loop like before Seven. Okay. Great. All right. So you can see that's coming together now. All right. Now I'm going to grab my next double pointed needle. And let me see if I can kind of turn this around and tuck this out of the way a little better. There we go. I just want to tuck that down and out of the way so you can see better what I'm doing. Again, I'm going to knit into the back of that, and we'll knit off those last seven, and then I'll show you the arrangement of your DPNs, or double pointed needles. All right, I've knit off those last seven stitches. I still have 14 on each one, or on each top and bottom. So this is the, these two needles that I have are, are kind of parallel. Can you see these two are the top portion? These two are the bottom portion. I'm back to the beginning of my round, which is where the tail is. And then this is my working yarn. Um, I don't, I suppose you could not separate your stitches onto all four needles um, right now, but I find that it provides a little more flexibility with the whole thing, even though it does feel super fiddly in the beginning. All right, now we're gonna start uh, round one of our seam free toe. So you're going to knit one and make one just as we did before in the last video. You're gonna try to ignore all the other pokey outies and just simply focus on the needle that you're working with, which is also why I always go back and make sure everything is good and centered on the other needles so that I don't accidentally drop any of them. Um, so we'll do that. Okay, so as before, we have this first one knitted and we're gonna go and pick up this loop right here see that we're gonna pick that up put it on the left hand needle okay see that and then we're going to knit into it all right so that's our make one just as with the other method or the other uh, part one tutorial where I did all this with circulars this will ease up and be less pokey once we get a few rounds in. So just bear with it. Okay, we're going to knit these stitches and move on to the next knitting to the other end of our top foot section. And then we'll do our make one when we have one stitch left on the top portion. Okay, so I've knitted that. Now that needle is free now. So I'm going to be sure to slide this to the middle so I don't drop anything. And you can see that our next section is here. Okay? Alright, then you need to slide that one down in. And we'll knit these six stitches, leaving one left on, until we just have one left on this one, and we'll do our increase there. We have one stitch left on this left side, and so we'll do our increase by lifting this loop down below, just as we did in the other video. All right. And then again, when we pick that up, it looks twisted, so we're going to want to right that by knitting into the back loop of that picked up stitch. All right, we made it across, made it across the top of the foot. So we're going to turn our work over, turn our work over, and then start across here. 
Again, this looks like pickup sticks and it feels a little bit like that. You gotta make sure not to get that other one, other needle bound up in there. So make sure that your need, your yarn is coming off the needle adjacent to it, not wrapping around a, a pokey from another needle, I guess for lack of a better term. Okay, so we're gonna make do our increase here by picking up that loop down below, placing it on the left needle and knitting it. Okay. All right, and then we'll knit across to the other end. All right, so we've done our foundation round and then we've also done the first round of increases and it's you know it's starting to be a little more flexible starting to be a little bit easier to control and move move around with these needles um, so we'll we'll turn over and, and that will improve as you get some fabric established that will things will become more flexible and less tight and awkward um, so if you can just bear with it the other thing to keep in mind to avoid ladders and if you're not sure what ladders are you'll know it when you see it um, ladders are kind of a stretched out bar area that occurs between double points sometimes. And so what that means is that when you, when you go from one needle to the other, you want to make sure that if you're ending here with this stitch and you're moving to this stitch, you want to make sure to snug it up pretty well so that the bar between here, this area, doesn't end up widening out and making what looks like ladder rungs. So when you're moving from needle to needle, you just want to make sure to give everything a, a nice little tug on the first stitch and on its partner, the second stitch. You want to make sure to snug things up so that you don't end up with those ladders. All right, I've just finished round three and you can already see that this is much more flexible and easier to deal with than it was in the beginning. So you're just going to want to carry on with the same pattern that we've been using and go ahead and, and knit that on up to the desired number of stitches for your foot. Um, in the interest of full disclosure, I will probably go ahead and take this out and I will use my regular, um, my regular needles and do this the same way as I've done my first one. And the reason for that is sometimes your gauge is different depending on which style of needles you're using. Um, I've noticed that my gauge is slightly different with double points and I'm not sure if that's just because of the join is different, you know, whereas here I have the cables with the join and here I have, you know, four different intersections of needles. And so it does make your gauge slightly different because um, even if you pull it and tug it to avoid those ladders and everything evens out smoothly, it does mess with your gauge just a little bit. And I do want my socks to be the same um, gauge in that way. But I wanted to give you a, a little bit of a, a demonstration on how it works to do this with double pointed needles. So as always, um, leave me any questions or comments that you might have down below in this video or in the Facebook group, either one.